So welcome everyone. I always say that because I'm also recording for the guys who are not here today. Welcome to you guys too. So today there's a question, another question from Kony, one of the students in Hong Kong. Okay, so she asks, I know it's not how long we sit, but how deeply we connect with the practice of meditation. I sit normally 30 minutes, though I don't use timer anymore. It takes at least 15 minutes or so to relax the body and mind. Of course, thoughts pass by like as quickly as a plane takes off in a busy runway. But I find after a while, which is around 30 to 40 minutes, my mind gets tired or I get tired of watching the thoughts pass by. Then I stop my sitting practice. Is that weird that I'm getting tired of watching the mind? Then I stop watching it and meditating? Okay. A general sense of uh, tiredness arising. So first of all, if your meditation practice is not working as you would expect it to work, or say you sit down and you become calm after a certain amount of time and you go deeper into deeper states, then usually, if that happens to me, I would have a look at how do I spend my day? What do I do during the daytime? Because the culprit for your meditation not working properly uh, is to be found in how you spend your daytime, what you do. How you spend your night time? How do you sleep? How do you eat? How do you entertain yourself? Is it too much? Is it too little? Entertainment is good, but it easily gets too much. So a little entertainment is good. We need it. We need some form of happiness. Entertainment and joy, sometimes it's important. But then constantly, all the time, that really needed. Like nowadays, you have your phones, right? It's it's kind of non-stop, isn't it? There's a, we don't have these kind of uh, spaces anymore in which we are just bored. Have you noticed? Because as soon as you get bored, you fill it with activity, and it's easy nowadays because the phone allows you to be active non-stop. There's always some messages to respond. There's always some posts to make. There's some photos to shoot. So that is one of the reasons why meditation practice doesn't really work. We're too busy uh, with social media and the phones and stuff like that, internet. That is true for many people. It might not be for all of you, but certainly for many. So look at yourself. How do you spend your day honestly? Notice, hour by hour that passes by, what do you do? In other words, how do you exhaust yourself? Right? Everything you do during the day is mostly, uh, every kind of activity is some form of energy leaking. It is exhausting. And then you replenish the physical energy. You eat something, take a nap, you replenish the mind's energy a little bit by taking a nap. Not really most of the time, because we dream when we take a nap. So the mind doesn't really rest quite that much. can help a little bit, though. So then there is, uh, how do you interact with people? What kind of topics do you talk about? Uh, Some emotional topics, particularly. There are very emotional topics, like uh, politics. Many people can get very emotional about politics. About religion, can also get very emotional. Talking about religion, you know, my religion versus your religion, and my opinion about my religion and my practice versus your practice. The general contemplating the many downfalls of the human race, the many problems that we create. It uh, is a very emotional topic. It creates a negative atmosphere in the mind and it eats your energy. 
it's the mental energy. So how do we know when the mental energy is reaching a limit? You feel a sense of exhaustion. And if you keep going, then it goes into the body. And the body keeps going, giving its kind of last reserves to the mind so that the mind can keep going doing what it does habitually. And then the, the result is tiredness. For example, when I'm on a retreat, I hardly cannot sleep in the night because uh, it's too much rest in the in the day. There's a lot of meditation. You rest, so you don't need so much sleep anymore. And at night time, you're quite alert, quite awake, in a comfortable way, because you meditate a lot. There's not so much need for rest anymore. But then I have my normal day-to-day -day structure where I have to answer emails, I have to make posts online, answer people's questions and so forth, and do edit these kind of teachings and so forth, upload them and all that it takes energy. And particularly a lot of energy goes out for internet, I found, for devices, for media. It's kind of a huge demon that eats away a lot of energy, chunks and chunks. So generally after about 30 minutes of using the computer I feel genuinely quite exhausted. And uh, there is a tendency to ignore that and to just keep going because there's some interest in what I do and then time flies by and so it's quickly easy to overstep our boundaries and to be unable to listen to the body because the mindfulness goes into the computer or whatever you do. You're not with yourself, so you don't, you're not in touch with yourself. You're out there in the world, getting lost in the world. And if that is cultivated continuously, then it leads to excessive thinking habits. And then it eats away all of your energy all the time. Basically, that is the reason why we get tired in general, okay? In meditation practice, there is two kinds of tiredness I found. One type of tiredness is sort of your mind putting you to sleep because you start to see yourself. And so your mind has already kind of learned to, uh, to that you're doing the meditation practice now regularly and that it cannot escape you in a way because you're just looking at it all the time. So usually... If you're not doing your meditation, then your mind can escape into activities. But in meditation, it can't. You're just looking at it all the time. Imagine you're in a room and the door is locked and there is a camera in the corner. Someone's watching you 24-7. How do you feel? You can't do nothing. It's, there's no privacy. And for the mind, it's kind of similar. If you're looking at your conditioned habits and your mind and how it generally is to be you. The mind has no privacy, and so the only way kind of, of escaping it sometimes is to just shut down the system and make you tired, make you drowsy. This is a kind of an escape route of the mind, getting out of the meditation, getting out of you watching it all the time. In the beginning stages, that might just be boredom, and you're buying into the boredom. You're looking at the boredom and you go, ooh. Oh, sorry, you're buying into it. It means you're not looking at it. You're buying into it. You feel bored. Oh, I'm so bored. This meditation, nothing is going on. I'm just watching my breath. It's boring. And so you stop. It's very often for beginners because they don't see the boredom yet. They feel they are the boredom. Okay. So then you get into seeing the boredom. It becomes quite interesting actually looking at boredom. Oh, there it is. How is it like boredom? And then eventually mind needs to find a sort of a different trick to catch you. So it makes you tired. And for a beginner then it's still very difficult to see the tiredness. It robs your mindfulness very easily, doesn't it? But if you get really more advanced in your practice, you'll be more able frequently to just look at the tiredness, and by looking at the tiredness, it goes away.
So that might be one way out of this kind of spiritual tiredness, the, the kind of the escapism of the mind. Another form of tiredness that arises in meditation comes from doing it wrongly. You're practicing the wrong way. You're practicing with an attitude that is pushy. You're exerting yourself. You're looking at yourself and you go like, well, there's another thought. I have to stay focused. I need to look at that thought. There, it's gone. Okay, next thought. It's kind of like a task for you. It's like a business. You're not watching with a relaxed attitude, so you're losing energy. You're watching with an agenda. I need something there. I need to get enlightenment, or I need to become more peaceful. Here, you're stressing out. <laughs> you're stressing out about getting more peaceful. <clears throat> it is possible. I'm an expert with that. And this is my day-to-day -day job, to stress out about being more peaceful. <laughs> it's what I do, right? So I'm, I'm an expert with that. Uh, so, But really, learning about meditation means you eventually learn to not stress out about being peaceful, and then there it is. There, the peace just comes. It's kind of like it comes to you when you're not wanting it to come. It comes to you because you're nice and quiet. You're not that kind of noisy meditator that constantly runs around the forest of its own thoughts looking for peace. Peace is a very shy animal. It comes to you when you're quiet. You don't want anything. It's in general, it's very attractive to a human being if you don't want anything. You become very attractive. You all know these kind of relationships in which your partner, God forbid it's you, it's always the other one, isn't it? It's very needy. I need you to show me that I'm worthy. I need you to show me that I'm love lovely, that I'm lovable. We say, I love you, honey, because we want to hear an answer. If we don't hear an answer, then we are insecure. What's wrong? We relate to other people very often because we're insecure beings and relating to others might give us a sense of security sometimes. Kind of confirms who we are. Ah, I'm a member of the group. Ah, people like me. People are still okay with me. It's very exhausting. And so if we approach someone like this, <clears throat> that person has the tendency to put up walls Nobody really likes needy people. People like happy people, content people. Then naturally, that acts kind of like a magnet. If you're looking for a partner, right now you're looking for a new relationship, here is my relationship tip. <laughs> Just be happy. Nothing is as attractive as that. You're needy, very unattractive. Like that guy that immediately calls you after you just had a date. And then texts you after he called. <laughs> and then texts again because you didn't answer. And he's waiting, you know, he's waiting on the phone for you to answer. It's like I'm doing that sometimes. I'm chatting with someone on Facebook Messenger or something like this. Chatting with them. I'm writing a message and then I wait. You can also already see, like, they've already seen what I wrote. It says, like, seen 1158. <laughs> and you're like, uh, he's seen it. Why is he not answering? Very needy. Then why did I write? It reveals something, doesn't it? <laughs> it shows the actual reason why I wrote. Not to get, so not because I'm genuinely interested in the other person, but I need someone to be interested in me. And it's an easy way to trigger that. It's like, here I am. 
seen. Now, I'm waiting for the answer, you know. It's like same, you do a Facebook post, right? You do a post. Why? Look really, you're looking back at your post later, right? Why? You have new notifications. Could you ignore them? Just say, oh, who cares? Just new notifications. And then not look back at your post. Like, who reacted to it? What did they comment? Someone commented on your post. As you see, it reveals something. It reveals a real, the, the real reason why we post. I'm taking this example of Facebook because it's such a modern thing that everyone kind of knows. You might still know that from maybe you're not using Facebook. Maybe you write mails, like real letters. And you send them and then no reply comes back. <laughs> and you feel really nervous. What's what's going on, you know? This is exhausting. If we are needy like this, to come back to the beginning, if we are needy like this in our meditation practice, towards ourselves, it's almost like, you know, you send a message, hey, I'm meditating right now, and you send it to your heart and then you wait for the response. And of course you want your heart to say, I'm so comfortable and peaceful right now. Thanks for meditating. Great, Toby. Then I can feel like, ah, yes, I'm doing a great job. My heart is peaceful and happy. But that's not the point of meditation, isn't it? You're not here to get something. You're here to let go. What does that mean, here to let go? You don't need to get some deep awareness center of the, the real self or something like that. You're not getting anything. It's not about getting anything. The more you let go, the more you understand. And the mind comes up with all kinds of stuff for you that are that is interesting. Hey, observe your thoughts. Look at them pass by, one after another. Have a look at them. Observe them, observe them. Yeah, there's another one. Look, look. There's a hidden agenda to that, isn't there? You want something from it. That's why you get tired. Precisely the reason. We are losing energy rather than getting energy. If you get energy, it comes from stillness, from letting go. It's just thinking. Who cares? And just tiredness. Who cares? Like that kind of attitude, that's kind of letting go. You just see, ah, thinking, that's it. That's all it is, isn't it? It's just thinking. If you can see your thoughts like this, it's very good. It's quite powerful. It's just feeling in the body. There's various feelings also in the body. All the time. It's just feeling. So notice, where do you feel your tiredness? You can observe it. You can just stay mindful. Just leave the tiredness alone. Just see it. It's there. If you fall asleep, fine. If, if not, fine. This is like you totally you don't want anything from it. You don't want to stay awake. You don't want to fall asleep. You're just here, ready to look at what happens in this very moment. Another reason why we are tired in meditation practice is because we're not fully present. And that comes because we have this underlying drive, this agenda, the motivation to get somewhere. This is a sense of not really being here. You're not fully committed to this moment. So you get tired. You're losing energy because you need to be somewhere else. Like you need to be not tired, for example. Like I'm tired, but... And then the, the mind comes with that very interesting question. Why are you tired? What's going on? What's wrong? Something's wrong. You must be doing it wrong. Doubt. It falls and doubt comes up. So I think I'm doing it wrong. Maybe. And then we, we hold on to these thoughts. We take them very seriously. All these thoughts that follow that. I'm tired. Why? What does it mean? <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it my my throat chakra? Is it blocked? It doesn't even matter. Just let it go. 
If you're in any way interested in opening your chakras, then let go. It's the best way, fastest way. Instead of taking a scalpel and doctoring around on them, it's impossible. It's not your, your business to take care of. Our business, let go. And that leads to everything anyways in your being opening up because you're leaving yourself alone. So the body does what it naturally does best, heals itself, takes care of itself. It does that when you're in deep sleep, doesn't it? The body heals itself. And why does it do that? Because you're not there. <laughs> Finally, it's kind of like your cells in your body are like, oh gosh, finally he's gone. Let's do what we really need to do. Healing. This is, by the way, proven by science as well, that your cells regenerate in deep sleep. That's why we need it so badly. You die without deep sleep. You need it. It's torture if someone doesn't let you go to deep sleep. It's an actual torture method. Sleep deprivation. Someone slapping you in the face continuously when you want to go to sleep. It drives you crazy because there's no escape anymore from your busy mind. You're losing energy until you break. So we need to go to deep sleep to rest or to meditation to rest if we know how to meditate. And we know how to meditate when we learn the art of letting go. What do you let go of first? Do you let go of future and past? You come into this present zone, the present moment, right now, right here. Thai they call it Pachuban, the present moment. The truth of this present moment. What is here now? What is real? There's sound. It's true, right? There is some sound. It's sound. It's just sound. Then uh, there's smells also. There's maybe taste. There's vision. You see things. You feel. There's feeling. It's the five external senses. That is all true. And then there is thinking. And that's it. In fact, this is all there is. There's nothing more than that. There is just hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, feeling, thinking. So-called six senses. There's nothing else in this entire world other than that. In fact, the Buddha calls that this is the world, the six senses. Without those six senses, there is nothing. Eliminate them one by one. What would be left? So notice this play of the senses every moment. Don't even call it anything like tiredness or anger or depression. Don't give it any names even. Because that's just thinking. Don't give it any label. Just feel, really connect intimately to this moment, again and again. I recommend doing that by often during the day, remind yourself to just come back into the body, get out of your head, fill your whole body with awareness. Again and again, no matter where you are, what you do, it's great if there's a traffic jam, you have time to feel the body. You need to wait somewhere? There's a queue at 7-Eleven, great, you can feel your body. If someone is talking stuff that you have absolutely no interest in, great, you can feel the body. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes people anyways, they just talk because they want to empty their heart. Let them empty their heart, you stay present. So you just relax, go into the body, just feel. Wherever you are, walking, sitting, lying down, standing, you feel the body. Make it your primary practice. Forget all high-minded things. Drop it. Forget it. 
the, the pinnacle of awareness, awareness, seeing awareness, consciousness, becoming conscious of itself, and forget it. Can you feel your body? Good. Stay there. Very important. It's always the basics. Stay with the basics. Stay with the basics. It is the basics that go deeper. Each time you stay there, it's basically like you are, you know, you, these elevators, okay? You just get on them, and as you're on them, you just stand there and you get somewhere else, right? So I call it the, the elevator of meditative state, okay? So you come, you feel your body, you get fully present, just feeling, not labeling, not talking about it, not commenting, just feeling. If you stay there, you're on the elevator. And you will get up. And as you go up, your views are changing. The higher you get up, the more you understand. All we need to do is stay here, stay put. And another thing that comes to mind about tiredness is just don't make a great deal out of it. It's just tiredness. Sleep. I made a, I made a great deal out of tiredness for a long time. For me, it was very important. How to uh, tackle tiredness in meditation? And I read scholastic texts about it and so what the scholars say about tiredness and how that is relating to the energy body and the subtle ethereal stuff and all that. And to, to understand what to do. So visualize light. Some people said to visualize light. So I tried visualizing light. And still tired. It doesn't work. So I must be doing something wrong there. And so I, I just got really into that. And so finally I met my teacher here in, in Phuket. And with the hope of finding an answer from a very skilled, high-level meditator, I asked him how to deal with tiredness. And his answer was one word, sleep. <laughs> so, so simple. And it really struck me in this moment. I was like, wow, that's so wise. <laughs> It's so wise, but I couldn't see it for such a long time. <laughs> and now I really enjoy saying that to other students who come <laughs> to the retreat and they're like, Toby, what should I have? You feel very tired. And then I go like, sleep. I feel really masterful saying it. <laughs> it's so profound, you know. That's such an impact. It has such an impact. Tired? Well, sleep. Re you need rest. And that's important part of the practice too. Being well rested. If you're tired, your practice, forget your practice. There's no practice if you're tired. You're just kind of moving in this uh, haze for 30 minutes and it doesn't, doesn't help at all. It doesn't do nothing. You seem like some people, they think like two minutes of meditation is enough. By far not. It begins at 30 minutes. Particularly if your lifestyle is very busy. Meditation starts at 30 minutes. Mindfulness during the day for two minutes, great. Be mindful of your body wherever you are, feeling your body, etc. But real meditation practice, that type of practice that aims to get deeper over time, aims to get you to levels of insight and enlightenment, that won't take off unless you're really sitting and you're aiming at one hour. But you start off with 30 minutes and then slowly, gently build upon that. Week by week, month by month. Take your time. Add five minutes every month or whatever you feel is adequate, right? But the real meditation practice starts at about 30 minutes. That's when we are rested enough, when the mind is kind of wound down enough after the day-to-day -day stuff. 
then you have like a platform where you can build upon. It gets better over time, so you usually can relax faster over time, like 15 minutes, sometimes even 10 minutes if your lifestyle is really low-key. And if you're really an expert of meditation, you can relax instantly, any place, any time. But for beginners like us, it's very important to uh, make space and time for practice, do it regularly, um, take care of what you do during the day, rest, sleep if you're tired. I recommend to take a nap before you meditate. I like doing that. Just sleep for 30 minutes or 20 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever it takes, and then I do my session. So the kind of the brain is rested. Then I go into meditation. And it's much easier. There's no struggle. Since I've been doing this also... There's no more trouble with tiredness in meditation. It's not a question anymore. You rest when you need rest. Your body tells you already, doesn't it? it tells you, yeah, please, go to bed. It's another thing with that spiritual kind of tiredness I mentioned first. There you want to stay a bit more persistent. Look at it. Stay seated in your practice. And uh, when it comes to, to, to Kony in Hong Kong... You are already on a level where it might be appropriate or you might already know what kind of tiredness it is. Is it just the mind trying to ignore itself or is it genuine exhaustion from too much whatever? Look at your life. Okay, so I think that's enough for today, isn't it? Yep, 12 already.